Hey everybody, back for another exciting episode of Disco Elysium. If this is your first time on the channel, consider liking and subscribing. It helps us get these videos uh, further up on that YouTube algorithm that decides so many fates and futures of this world. Anyway, let's talk to this cool guy. I'm a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. The man mutters to himself, like a extending the beats as he goes. We're gonna keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. He motions towards the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates of the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating. An all-around cluster fuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo. For days upon days upon days. Upon days. How long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout, and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. He snickers. Find the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. Tell me, what do you need? Uh, know anything about the dead man? The one pointing, the one hanging behind the hostel there. He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really been asked about that. Been wasting time right here, keeping busy. Busy? With what? Analyzing the fundamental structure and the psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over the docks, workers got a blockade set up making demands, no way in or out. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane and half the company. I forget what, exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company right up in town, too, like a strict negotiator, a strike negotiator type. They know what's up, pr precise demands and so on. Ah, yes, from the Wild Pines. He takes a note. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Want to say anything else I should know? Anything else, he thinks. Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers, uh, camineurs, a few still hang around here, waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high or laid. He smiles awkwardly. Not that I blame them anyway. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examine life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down on the road toward the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. Who, uh, what's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. Once one, when one's ended, you can get on to the next one. I'm gonna say, what are you hauling anyways? Oh, high-grade narcotics, legal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. I'm gonna say, okay, what are you actually hauling? Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man, he grins. I've got another haul of FALN cargo. Mostly sporting goods, tracksuits, that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Occident. Uh, the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the, oh my god, Il Moran market lately. All right, I have another conversation. I'm going to go, good for now, good talk. Don't be a stranger, he gives a salute with two fingers. Cool, I like that guy. All right, nothing over here, nothing whipping around my head. It's for the dockyard. All right, we're gonna go talk to some of that guy. Does this also say fuck the police? Fuck the police. Pigs go home. Close for winter, please use main entrance. All right. Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. Cool sculpture. Uh, who are you? Uh, welcome to Revachol. Announces the rotund man. The remark isn't addressed to you, it's addressed at Kim, racist lorry driver. I'm going to say, why are you addressing my partner like Don't that? Don't you welcome to Ravachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000-year-old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. <coughs> it belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him. It's men like you who keep Ravachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone. 
to climb out of this post-war limbo. Limbo, what's going oh, on come here? Come on, man. I just said welcome to Rivachol. It's a lorry driver thing. You can say that, but your name is Racist Lorry Driver. So I don't want to say you're racist, but... I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here. That I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them comes tense. <clears throat> I think I'm going to say, your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. I'm going to say, well, I think we all learned something here. I haven't learned anything I didn't know before. The lorry man shakes his head with indignation. Now let's settle. We have a couple Whatever questions. Whatever you say, officers. You could ask him to show you the soles of his boots. He definitely looks like someone capable of lynching. Maybe he was present. I found this mug in the trash. Show it to the man. Yours. Don't say that. Is it yours? Uh, thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. Let's see the sole of your boots. And admiring the stompers, eh? He grins. Sure, check him out. He lifts his left foot, then the right. Look at the sole. On the bottom of the man's boots, you see an intricate tangle of treads, but with no immediately discernible pattern. The wind howls over the Bay of Rebecal, uh, a cascade of cold air flowing through the city streets. Those same streets have left their share of scuff marks on the underside of your green snakeskin shoes. Mm, thanks. Not the ones I'm looking for. We're done now. I don't have that mug. I want to burn it. Because I like my friend. Whose name I don't know. But that's okay. Oh. I can go into this store. This world is unending. There's so much to do. Alright. Yellow roses. Dozens of them. Tulips too. Melancholy pop song plays on the radio. Yes. I think you should know that I can't remember anything. No response. He just arches his brow. I literally don't remember anything. There was drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There's a sudden harsh edge to his voice, like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. I'm going to say fine. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That is real relief. Say nothing. Tendon glances at an electronic wristwatch. Okay, forget it. Nothing. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. She returns to her magazine. Uh, what's the magazine she's reading? What magazine are you reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover boasting a colorful photo of two girls kissing. This is pop stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. I approve of this very futuristic tap on the girls kissing. That's what James would say. She pops her raspberry flavored bubble gum and nods. Lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an, uh, an apologetic half smile. Let's proceed. I have um, some questions for okay. you. Okay, I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Um, can you tell me anything about the dead body? I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it. Thank you for your help. Uh-huh, she brushes a strand of her hair off her face and tries to return to her magazine. Alright, leave. I don't have the money to buy ammonia. Hope you're having a good time. Enjoy your futuristic space girl book. Equip a flashlight in low-light areas. All right, I'll do that. Loading screen. All right, here's the strike that's happening. Oh, some, got some coin on the ground. We're making our way there. All right. This guy looks important. Let's talk with him. Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells toward the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot and oddly screechy for a man his uh, size. What's going on here? Pull up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. 
The broad shoulder alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than everybody else. You're to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down? No. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. He chants right at the gate. Right to work. Right to work. Besides, we're not that different. It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. What kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people. Rights of workers. To have gainful employment. To make a salary. And feed their families. I'm going to say, regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like why we're not allowed to make a living here. He bells to the gate. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, scub. The Lord and man hollers in return. I'm going to say, uh, who are these strike bearers? Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. The man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. We came here uh, to help the harbor run smoothly in the time of crisis. If union fucks don't want to work, they ought to let in those who do want to work. I have a question. The lieutenant looks him in the eye. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow me because I'm big and loud? No, they follow the rules of the market, the rules of economy, because they were, he starts bellowing, given a job to do. Um, what exactly is your goal here? We were promised work, he points to the gates. We had been there working if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. And you're unable to breach the entrance. Main gate's locked. We'll try heavy ordnance to bust it open. Could try to get in through the secretary's office. He points up the stairs. Door's locked. The guard's blocking the way to the access panel. I don't mean the scrawny uh, mesk punk either. Meske? I don't know how to pronounce it. He points at the dock worker idling on the staircase. I mean head measurer or whatever he is. Wait, head measurer? Huge 70s guy standing up there on the overhead passage. Won't let anyone by. The access panel is right behind him. How bad guy can one by be? You seem capable. Bad, the man glares at you. Stand on narrow bridge. He's got a strategic advantage, an advantageous position, and he's trained. I don't know how Union is trained a killer up there. But that's no one's no joke. And my men are tired and hungry. They're workers, not fighters. Why don't you just talk to them? Like civilized folk, you mean? The man rubs his chin. These natives fucks don't understand civilized. We'd better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now, if you can't get in anyway. No, they will give up eventually or get drunk, leave the button unguarded, then we charge. The man rubs his jaw, a perfect lightly beard, bearded square wedge. I'm just gonna leave now. All right. Oh, this is normal. Um. Bizarre scientific news from the Rubicall West today where a police officer shit has been observed at a pressure of around 49, 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law official. Remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. Um, all in Darren's white checks unlocked learning cap for endurance raised to four. Nice. Huh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, and then maybe can I like unequip it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Some garbage. There's some coins on the ground. We'll get, we're gonna pay for it. We're almost there. Well, we're stuck in traffic. Look in the window. Uh, the windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorryman's cab with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. What kind of stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his space with substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia, proclamations about honor, strength, and purity. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Racist national paraf paraphernalia, he grits his teeth. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. Lieutenant, Lieutenant nods towards the racist lorry driver. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely yes. The guy's proud of who he is, drapes it all over his machine. He was acting tough before. This probably scared him a bit. Who knows when it'll come in handy? A slightly scared racist lorryman? Leave. Another car. Let's look in the window. Foreign car kept in good position. Pretty condition. Man, all right. Well, this looks like the end of the map. 
Oh, baby, we're almost there. We're only $148 away. Pell driver, the small working woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her, on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there's a warm smile on her face. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and money. Maybe she's your grandma? It's gonna, nothing to do here. Well, I guess I'll ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, the world, your words fail to reach her. All right. We're gonna go. Oh, some treasure. A white tank top. My shirt does plus one conceptualization, minus one suggestion. Clothes is plus one physical instrument. Do I look cooler with it? Oh, no, I look hideous. <laughs> I look hideous with it. I'm still missing a shoe. Maybe I'll find it eventually. All right. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been re reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippe III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revacol, son of Philippe II, the opulent, father of Philippe IV, the insane. Not a good track record of mental health in the family. What did this king do? Oh, nailed this. Watch this. Dab! Nah, I failed. You have no idea what you did a week ago. All right, leave. Okay, we're just gonna check this thing out. Human ox is covered on the top. Uh, thing. All right, let's get out of here. Map. All right, we have that one accessible again. And then here we have Yellow Man Mug. Got it. I think I'm gonna go back to my room. We're gonna search around a bit up there. I have to find out who I am, where my badge and my gun are. These are all things that seem important. I don't have a strong will yet or stomach to get through my problems. Get Go to the, the dead body and look at the dead body. I'll give this guy this $2.31. Is this money? I still love that part. That part was funny, funny, money, money. Alright. Oh, there's my other shoe. Yes, this was... Alright, we got both shoes. We're a real cop now, folks. Secret task complete. Find your other two, your shoe. There they are. There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Wait, these do not look like normal cop shoes. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Yeah, man. Checks out. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner, but all just too morbid to ignore. I'm sorry for this. No problem, officer. He takes a, um, a step toward the door like he'd like to leave. I just gotta, like, oh, that's the mirror. Ah, so that's how we sleep. That's the broken. So this is uh this was the hint for the shoe. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we found our shoe. That's nice. One second, gotta close the door. I think I'm gonna talk to my neighbor. Now she went in this one. Knock. There's no answer. Tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Swallow the emotion. Leave. Okay, well we got our shoe. Our secret task is complete. That's why I went up there. I was like, there's a shoe I was missing hanging on the, the, the coat rack right beside my door. I knew something was up. Okay. Well, we can go explore the other way. Oh, wait, 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 a bottle of beer. Um, so a man is sleeping at the table wearing a mud caked boots and rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reads wild pines and circled by a logo with a tree. On the counter, hold up his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. We'll leave. I don't want to lick it. I'm not drinking. Find booze and drink it. That's a task? Well, I don't know. Maybe if I drink, I become super cop, but I don't think so. I also love that I'm a cop walking around with like yellow rubber gloves. That makes me seem really cool and I really dig it. I dig it. All right, well, let's go. Let's see what this says. Wow. Good God, this map is ginormous. Okay, small child. It's a bookstore, it looks like. Okay, a whole new world. Man, this game is ginormous. Hello. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish head trapped in amber. A curious pendant you're wearing. Oh yes, helps to have an anchor in these times. She clutches the, she clutches the pendant and narrows her eyes as well. So you're the owner of the store. I am, the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Farewell for now, book peddler. Hmm. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Uh, shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing, why aren't you browsing the books? She fiddles with the pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? You ought to. I love the more she tries to, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage like trinket. Uh, you see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straws inside a storming fish head with empty sockets stares at you. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtain remains shut before you. Pull open the curtain. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you to limits to customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychology speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Ma'am, this is a different I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just don't, please don't go in there. I can't allow that. You only make things worse and unleash the powers. <sighs> I don't care. You can't stop me. I'm opening them. No, she raises her hand to try. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk through this before you decide to do anything extreme. 
lies. Rip them open, we say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Ignore. All right, let's go talk to her. Let's learn about these curtains. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to crime, romance, and Why are you so uptight about the curtains? It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. If it's just a storage room, then why do you have the strange trinket on the curtains? It's just for decoration. She waves, on, she waves under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight lip smile, and something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Take it easy. You've broken her resistance. Pushing her further will gain nothing. Why don't you just tell me... Have you sought help from anyone? Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Semini's uh, mediators. They provided me with wards. She nods at the strange cage like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building, even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this? She holds a pendant in her palm. Its ochre, okra heart glistens under the lights. No, it's a special Himian amulet blessed by the desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's compelled people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. <clears throat> I had the books anointed with different in inducement smells. For example, she nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Why don't you just tell me right away it's a curse? It's not going to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, negativism, she shivers. It's dangerous. Talking about the void, wraiths angers them. Such wraiths may prove a formidable en en enemy. Suit up. How does this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around in the dimly lit store. The curse is so much worse than you can imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Wait. I was hoping for something a little... Okay, I'm a little confused. Everyone knows that all previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy and their malicious spirits are still here feeding off the bad practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence as if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Strange. I feel unwanted, too. What does it mean? Truly so, her eyes narrow as she tries to get a read on your energy. Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off of you. Uh... You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It might be dangerous. Would you like me to take the case? I can investigate to see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. All right. Goodbye. All right. I think I'm going to call this episode here once I get out of this loading screen. Thanks for watching, everybody. You guys have a good one. I'll see you on the next episode of Disco Elysium. In the meantime, why don't you click that like button? And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to this channel. Because I have this town is huge and I have to keep exploring it. Because that's just the way things work. Bye!